uh, girls, we just do a very quick recap of uh, what we have done uh, yesterday. Okay, concerning the courts. So, courts properties, there are two. There are two properties uh, that we must be very mindful of. Uh, when two courts are uh, of the same distance from the center O, in this case, say, three centimeters from center O, three centimeters from center O, and if this court AB is 10 cm long, if this court is 10 cm long, what can we say about the length of CD? It definitely is 10 cm. Right? That's why we call them equal courts. Equal courts. Okay, so uh, likewise, likewise, if two courts are of the same length, if AB is 10 cm, CD is also 10 cm, then they must be of equal distance to the center O of the circle. Okay, so that's the first property we must remember. If two courts are equidistant from the center O, equidistant comes from the word equal distance, right? Then they must be the same in length. Are we cool with that? So, when we come to the second uh, court property, okay, what did I talk about regarding the second court property? Rashika. What is the second thing you've learned regarding court properties from yesterday's lesson? You can't put them in. Uh, when you cut from the center O, uh, if it cuts the chord, let's say it cuts the chord to EQ, if it cuts at 90 degrees, then? Yeah, cut in half. Very good, cut in half. Okay, so if the whole chord is 8 cm long, then this must be 4 cm, 4 cm. In other words, it will bisect the chord. You just uh, reiterate what uh, Rashika has mentioned. If I have a straight line OT, if it cuts at 90 degrees, then it must bisect the chord to EQ. Are we clear? Likewise, if it bisect the chord EQ, it must cut at 90 degrees. Are we clear? Yes or no? Okay. Okay, what is this OT called? What is this line OT known as? It's known as the perpendicular bisector. Remember, this line is known as the perpendicular bisector. Okay? Can you all be here? Come on. something like this. Two parallel chords, PQ and MH, they're parallel. They are three centimeters apart, uh, lying on the same side of a circle. Okay, so PQ is 7 cm, MN is 14 centimeters. So the question says, can you calculate what is the radius of this circle? So how do we do this? Okay, this is a little bit tough. Okay, tough, but doesn't mean it's not manageable. but we still can do this. Over here, you see, uh, oh, we have two chords, right? If I want to drop a straight line through them, okay, this straight line uh, cuts them at 90 degrees. What happens if they cut them at 90 degrees? What will happen? It will, it will bisect. Bisect. Very good. You bisect the chords, right? So what we have over here, Bisector. instead of 7 cm and uh, 14 cm, I, I will have this portion here. This is 3.5 cm, this is 3.5, this is 7 cm, this is 7 cm. Okay, I call this point A and B. A. This, this line o a, uh, OBA, okay, is the perpendicular bisector of these two chords. And because the two chords are 90 degrees, it must bisect the chords. So now I have a few numbers to work with. I have 3.5, I have 7. Okay, what else uh, can I do with this problem? Okay, watch here, uh, don't blink. I let this length be x. Okay, I let the length of OB be x. I let OB be x. If OB is x, can you tell me what is the length of OA? Somebody, what's the length of OA? X, x plus 3. Because the two chords are 3 centimeters apart, right? So from this information, I know that this is 3 cm. This is 3 cm. OA is x plus 3 centimeters. Okay, if I draw one line through them, OQ now. So OQ is actually, let OQ be, uh, OQ is the radius. Okay, let's take a look at triangle 
OAQ now. OAQ. OAQ. What kind of a triangle do we have? Right angle triangle. Right angle triangle. Okay, so we have this length is actually OAQ will look like this. So this is O, this is A, this is Q, this is 3.5 cm, this is 90 degrees, OA is X plus 3, this is R. When we see a right angle triangle and we have sides to deal with, one thing always comes to our mind first. What theorem comes to our mind? Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. So what equation can we form? Using the Pythagoras theorem, it will be 3.5 square plus 3.5 square plus x plus 3 square. Can I write this with x plus 3 square? Bracket square equals to r square. R square. So that, my dear, is my first equation. Are we cool? So if we have equation one, okay, we have two unknowns, we have x, we have r. Naturally, we must look for the second equation in order to find a unique set of values for x and y for r. Right? Okay, how do we get the second equation? Instead of looking at triangle OAQ now, is there another triangle we can look at? OEF. So now we look at triangle OBF. Okay? If we look at triangle OBF, okay, uh, OB is X, B, uh, BN is 7 centimeters. Okay, O N will be your R. Right? O, over here, in this situation, this right here is also a right angle triangle. It is also a right angle triangle. So, can we form another equation using my theorem? What will we have? 7 squared plus x squared equals 7 r squared square square plus x squared square r squared. Okay, now I want to ask you a question. Okay, over here I have R square, I have R square. What do you suggest that I do now? Substitute, Substitute right? Simultaneous equation. Since this is a 3.5 square plus x plus 3 plus x square is R square, and R square is also equal to 7 square plus x square, I just equate them together. Substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So what we have now is, is 1. Equation. Now we only have one equation comprising of only one unknown. In this case, it's x. So just go ahead, expand this, and then you solve for x. Are we cool with this? Okay. By solving this equation, okay, you expand this. Uh, you expand the left hand side. You cancel off the x squared. Your x squared minus x squared is zero. We have uh, x equals to four point six two five. So do we pop the champagne and celebrate now? <laughs>